Hi, welcome back to Wicked Mysterious. I'm your host, Danny. Today, we'll be venturing far beyond Earth, past our sun, into the constellation of Taurus to investigate the elusive Pleiadians. They're tall, blonde, ethereal, and supposedly here to guide humanity toward a new age of enlightenment. Thousands of people around the world claim to have communicated with these beings and claim to be these beings themselves. There might even be evidence right here on Earth that ancient civilizations have been in contact with them. Get into the bio ship and buckle up because we're about to explore the Pleiades. Let's get into it. I hope you are all doing well and staying warm. It finally got a titbit nipply here in New England. And yeah, I wanted to have this out sooner for you, for my Patreon members. But we got a new dog and she was spayed a couple weeks ago. And she needed to be cradled like a little baby for about a week. So alas, I am here. I'm bringing you another story from a mysterious universe. And... Yeah, that's really what's going on with me. Um, I'm very excited about this episode because I like the episodes that are about concepts and not necessarily a story of here's what happened. Um, I'm also messing with my webcam. So I noticed last week or last episode that the quality was pretty poor, poor bad. Um, I'm try I tried to record with my phone, but it's like glitchy. So I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm trying my best. <laughs> I think overall they're pretty good for somebody who's never made a YouTube video. Um, but yeah, it's like, where do I look? What do I do? Where do I put my feet? Um, and I also have some incense going over here. So hopefully that's not distracting with the smoke, but maybe it'll look cool. I don't know. Um, and maybe we'll see Lala today. Hopefully that would be nice if she came and sat with me. Um, but anyway, please like and subscribe. I'm sorry. I know that's probably so annoying to hear, but I have to say it. Need a little call to action. <laughs> um, also, as a reminder, you can get pre-release episodes by signing up for my email list on my website or also on Patreon, and those links are in the description box. So thank you so much to everybody who has continued to support this channel and this podcast. It really means everything to me. So... I wanted to cover this topic because I, like I'm sure many of you listening, resonate with the idea of being a starseed, even if you don't fully believe it like I don't. A starseed is someone who believes their soul comes from another star system, another galaxy, or even different dimensions outside of Earth. The idea is that starseeds are souls who have incarnated here on Earth with a specific mission or purpose, often involving spiritual growth, healing, or assisting humanity during a time of enlightenment and transformation. The hallmark of being a starseed is the strong sense of being different or not quite at home here on Earth. They may also feel drawn to topics like extraterrestrial life, spirituality, or ancient civilizations. And if you're like me, you might feel a longing for a home you've never been during this earthly life. As part of my research, I read a book called The Pleiadian Starseed Handbook, Understanding Your Role in the Galactic Family by Campbell Quinn McCarthy. This book was recommended to me by Amazon, as the algorithm probably knows that I'm probably an alien. Although it was an interesting read, I do have to come from a skeptical perspective. I had a lot of questions about where this information came from. And the author was remiss in informing us if this information was coming from research she'd done or perhaps channeled. There's no citations or references at all in this book, which would have made me feel more comfortable in relying on it for information. But a skeptic might say that you couldn't possibly use channeled information as a reference anyway. But I wish I could read all the books. But sadly, for us Earthlings, there's only 24 hours in a day. Also, I apologize in advance if I mispronounce anything. Um, I read the word Pleiadian in my head as Pleiadian or Pleiades, 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 I don't know. And I can't undo it in my brain, but I'm trying. I did look it up, so hopefully I got it right. Today we'll be focusing specifically on Pleiadian starseeds, though there are some other types. In general, a starseed is a soul that reincarnates on Earth with a special purpose of helping evolve humanity toward growth and enlightenment. Starseeds are empathetic, feeling a strong sense of compassion and empathy toward people and animals. 
From an early age, they're drawn to metaphysics, spirituality, and the idea of extraterrestrial life. Because of this, their lives often include mystical experiences and events, like vivid dreams, psychic visions, and memories of living on other planets. They also feel strongly that they have a mission or purpose for their life on Earth. Types of starseeds are based upon the planet of origination. For example, Syrian starseeds come from Sirius. There are many others, including Andromedian starseeds, Orion starseeds, and Lyrian starseeds. Each type does have specific traits. For example, Vagan starseeds are known for their creativity and intuition. Feline starseeds are known for their mysterious nature and love of freedom and independence. There is even a reptilian starseed, which is known for their strength and resourcefulness, but struggle with their controlling, power-hungry nature. So what then is the difference between a starseed and any other spiritually inclined person? What about something like indigo children? Crystal children, rainbow children, light workers, earth angels, empaths, and indigo children are all similar in that they are spiritually aware and evolved souls. They're here for the specific purpose of helping humanity evolve. I suppose it's possible to be labeled as one of these beings as well as being labeled a star starseed, but typically starseeds are thought to be souls from other planets, whereas indigo children and the like are more earthly. This book mentioned the idea of past lives being a somewhat of a misnomer. Because time is not linear, the book explains that a better term would be concurrent lives. It describes existence as a gem where all the facets and faces are our different lives occurring simultaneously. I did find this a bit confusing because how then would a starseed come from one specific planet? Wouldn't everyone be of everywhere all the time? If there is an origin and evolution of a soul, wouldn't something have to happen in an order of events, meaning that time for our soul is in fact linear? But that's probably a conversation for a different day. So right now, let's start with the basics of Pleiadian star seeds. The Pleiades star cluster, also known as the Seven Sisters, is visible from nearly every place on Earth at approximately 440 light years away. This is one of the closest star clusters to our solar system. Though the cluster contains more than a thousand stars, we're able to see seven of them with the naked eye. This is what earned them the name the Seven Sisters, first by the ancient Greeks. In Greek mythology, these sisters were the daughters of Atlas, the titan who held up the heavens, and they were placed in the sky for protection. Similarly, indigenous Australian cultures have various stories about the Pleiades, and also saw them as a group of sisters or ancestral beings. The Cherokee tribe calls them the Seven Boys. The Zuni tribe of southwestern United States, the Maya in Central America, and the Japanese all have similar myths about this star system. Interestingly, they're almost always called the Seven Sisters, and some share a theme about being different and escaping control. The Cherokee legend tells of seven boys of the same village who were different from the other tribes people because of their love of dancing. They loved dancing so much that they could not focus on their duties of hunting or farming. It became a source of conflict between the boys and their families. Becoming tired of the constant criticism, they escaped the village together. They perform a ceremonial dance and plead to the Great Spirit for help. They begin to rise into the sky, being lifted by an invisible force. The villagers gathered shocked that the seven dancing boys were ascending into the heavens, eventually transforming into stars. The great spirit placed them into the heavens as a reminder of the importance of dedication and unity. Similarly, in Japanese culture, the Pleiades star system is called Subaru, which means to unite. The myth describes the seven stars as daughters of the gods who occasionally descend from the heavens down to earth to sing, dance, and enjoy nature. In one particular legend, one of the daughters comes to Earth, and a young man from a nearby village falls in love with her. He steals her robe, which she needs to return to her planet, or as they call it, the heavens. Unable to leave, she falls in love with and marries the villager. Eventually, though, she becomes homesick. She finds her robe that was hidden by her husband, puts it on, and ascends back into the heavens. All around the world, ancient legend describes themes of homesickness, being or feeling different, and unity, all which describe traits of Pleiadian starseeds. 
Looking back at these myths through the lens of belief in ancient aliens, you have to wonder if those boys levitating into the air until they became part of the heavens were abductions or ascensions or something similar. The same with the seven sisters who descend to earth to sing and dance. Were they actual beings that actually came here and continue to to this day? Some researchers argue that our ancestors were, in fact, in touch with beings from the Pleiades, beings who came down and shared wisdom or perhaps even genes with us. The Pleiadians themselves, as described by those who claim contact, are often known as Nordic aliens because of their striking resemblance to Northern Europeans. They're described as tall, usually between six and seven feet, with long blonde or sometimes white hair and bright blue or green eyes. Their skin is fair, and they're often described as almost glowing or radiating light. They typically look younger than they are, suggesting that they do not age as rapidly as humans do. The Pleiadian Starseed Handbook says, quote, It is crucial to note that not all Pleiadians will fit this description. Pleiadian starseeds incarnated on Earth may have a wide range of appearances, influenced by their earthly genetics. Yet certain telltale signs can often resonate with their Pleiadian origins. For instance, a sense of magnetism or an ethereal aura are commonly noted. Life on the Pleiades is described as a beautiful paradise with sparkling bodies of water and lush green forests. These beings are highly technologically advanced, but they have found a way to keep nature and the environment in the forefront of everything they do. Their use of artificial intelligence is much different than ours, as it works on an energetic level. It's used to heal themselves and their planet. Their AI is very in tune with the highest good of all Pleiadians themselves, and serves as much more than just an informational superbrain. They also use crystals for technological purposes, such as storing or amplifying energy. These beings use healing chambers in which they lay, while light, sound, and frequency is applied to target energetic blockages and align them with higher frequencies. For travel, they use starships, sometimes called bioships, because the ships themselves are supposedly alive. These ships have their own consciousness and are made of organic compounds, allowing them to connect to the collective Pleiadian consciousness at large. This sort of living AI is in tune with the frequencies and needs of the beings, acting as sort of a co-pilot. Using the crystalline technology, these ships can supposedly become fully non-physical, allowing them to traverse through different dimensions. This also means that they have the ability to appear to those who have reached a higher state of consciousness or will be invisible to those vibrating at lower frequencies. In fact, these ships run on thought and vibration alone, not mechanics or fuel like human ships would. This also allows them to be virtually undetectable by human radar. Because human existence is somewhat trapped in a 3D reality, these starships can simply change vibration to one that's invisible to the human frequency whenever they want. This is also why they're able to appear and disappear instantaneously. Space travel for them is instant, where they're able to collapse space and time around them using quantum mechanics and thought, versus the human concept of linear space travel. Because of this ability, they're able to view events, alter timelines, and engage with other beings in existence. Physical limitations for them are entirely irrelevant. Can I just pause here to say whether this is true or not? It's still really freaking cool to think about and sounds like it would make for an awesome fantasy read. Um, I just love this concept um, that they use thought and vibration because that is everything we learn in, in uh, New Age land. So it sort of aligns with that. Um, and I just think space travel is cool, especially if it's interdimensional. They don't have to worry about linear travel like we do. But Anyway, moving on, these beings are highly peaceful, intelligent, and deeply spiritual. They communicate telepathically, and they're believed to operate at a frequency or vibration that's higher than our own. Vibration talk might sound new agey, but it's central to the Pleiadian concept of reality. They're said to exist in a realm where the mind can control matter, where thoughts and emotions directly shape their environment. In fact, Pleiadians are taught telepathy at a very young age, but more importantly, they're taught when and when not to use this telepathy. 
As a highly empathetic species, it's seen as a social faux pas to read the thoughts of another without explicit consent. Pleiadians and Pleiadian starseeds can speak to one another simply by looking into each other's eyes. According to the Pleiadian Starseed Handbook, individual telepathy goes far beyond just thought. It conveys concepts and experiences that are vivid and multi-layered and is described as quantum realm interaction. They have been channeled by humans on Earth and are known for their poetic and flowery use of Earth language, as with most channeled entities. Though Pleiadians have the ability to speak and understand every language, we are greatly inhibited by our use of this language, which is why we so often hear channeled beings using words differently than what we're used to, in a sort of disjointed but still almost rhythmic pattern. They tend to rely more on emotion and instantaneous information by sending thought alone, versus the earthly way of communicating by voice. An important form of communication between Pleiadians and humans is called light language. Light language is both verbal and symbolic. The symbols are intricate geometric shapes or sometimes elegant looking rounded shapes and swirl patterns. The language sounds like what you would imagine native languages of elves or fairies would sound like, flowery, feminine, and ethereal. Starseeds will say that they are able to channel the language, which acts as a healing tool that unlocks healing energy and DNA activations. I'm going to play a snip of light language that I found on YouTube. That clip came from a YouTube channel called Activation Vibration, and the video is called Pleiadian Light Language, Activate Cosmic DNA. And I will leave the link to the original video in the description box. One of the most famous Pleiadian channels is Barbara Marciniak. Back in the 90s, Marciniak published Bringers of the Dawn, a book filled with what she claimed were direct messages from Pleiadian beings. This book remains a cornerstone for people interested in Pleiadian teachings, though it is quite controversial. I probably should have started with that book instead of this one. <laughs> but according to Marciniak, the Pleiadians see humanity as a species that has forgotten its true nature. They talk about humans as beings who were once powerful creators who could shape reality with thought alone, but who have lost this ability due to manipulation by dark forces. Hmm, interesting. To the Pleiadians, Earth is like a classroom. We're here to grow, to learn, and to eventually remember who we are. Remember who you are. The Pleiadians allegedly told Marciniak that Earth has been visited many times by extraterrestrial species over the ages, some benevolent and others not. They warned us of forces that would try to keep humanity asleep, locked in a state of disempowerment and taxes. Marciniak's messages from the Pleiadians cover topics ranging from energy manipulation, self-love, and even conspiracies about the control of information, like the U.S. government. Christine Day is another woman who says she was contacted by these entities. She claims that she was diagnosed with a terminal illness but was healed through contact with Pleiadians. She described these beings as radiating pure, unconditional love and said that they taught her how to heal herself by aligning with higher frequencies. Her channeled messages emphasize the importance of community and collective consciousness, and she talks about Pleiadian initiations which is a series of steps that supposedly help individuals elevate their frequency, heal their trauma, and prepare for greater cosmic awareness. Day's teachings emphasize that humanity is on the cusp of transformation, but must learn to let go of the ego and live in unity. Another notable Pleiadian channel um, is Bringers of Light, which is an online group that claims to be in constant telepathic communication with Pleiadians. This group's messages focus on humanity's place within the galactic community, and they claim that there are many species observing us, some more advanced than others, but all waiting to see if humanity can get it together enough to achieve what's known as galactic citizenship, a kind of graduation into interstellar society. Can't forget to mention good old Billy Meyer, probably the most famous of the Pleiadian contactees, 
I'm going to cover this in a separate episode in more detail, but Billy was a contactee who claims that his encounters began when he was five years old in 1942. One of the beings he says he spoke to was named Semjase, Semjasi, who shared knowledge with him about Earth's history, the nature of the cosmos, and humanity's future. Who does this sound like? Sounds familiar, doesn't it? According to Meyer, the Pleiadians warned about environmental destruction, human overpopulation, and even artificial intelligence. A lot of these predictions have proven eerily accurate over time. Hey, it's Editing Danny. I wanted to include this because I found it so interesting. I was done with my episode, and this was not included in my original script, but when I was editing and I went to look for pictures of Nordic aliens, I came across this from aliens.fandom.com slash wiki slash Pleiadian. So listen to this. Ashtar, remember that? sometimes called Ashtar Sharon, is the name given to an extraterrestrial being or group of beings that a number of people claim to have channeled. UFO contactee George Van Tassel was the first to claim to receive an Ashtar message in 1952. We knew that already, but after the introduction of Ashtar by Van Tassel, other mediums began to claim contact. At one point, dozens of people were claiming contact with Ashtar, but presenting conflicting messages. We talked about that already, but I found it super interesting um, that this, this line here, due to his common depiction as a humanoid with blonde hair and European features, Ashtar may be considered a Pleiadian. And then it talks about the Ashtar movement, which we already discussed was stupid bullshit, but yeah, so interesting. And it, and it talks about some other uh, notable Pleiadians that have been contacted and Billy Meyer, which we talked about. So interesting. I just thought I would uh, share that with you all. Another major theme in Pleiadian teachings is the idea of spiritual awakening and the nature of reality itself. The Pleiadians speak of something called the matrix, a kind of illusion or a web of control that keeps humanity trapped in a limited perception of reality. They claim that humanity is ready to break free from this illusion. According to many sources, the Pleiadians are here to help us raise our vibrations to match theirs. They believe, again, in unity, love, and the interconnectedness of all life. The Pleiadians suggest that everything in the universe has a frequency, and by raising ours, we can access higher states of consciousness and even communicate with beings like them. They say that emotions aren't just feelings, they're frequencies, energies that can actually affect your health, your mind, and even your fate. They teach that healing these emotional wounds is essential to raising one's vibration. To them, love is the highest vibration, a force that can literally transform reality. Speaking of, if you are interested in learning more about frequencies in terms of your own life, you can sign up for the waiting list on my Manifestation 101 course over on my website, hypna-gaja.com. That's H-Y-P-N-A-G-O-G-I-A.com. I will leave the link in the show notes for you. Um, according to Pleiadians, humanity is on the brink of an awakening. They allegedly foresee a time when Earth will make contact with extraterrestrials on a large scale. Hopefully that happens soon. But they also warn that this can only happen when humanity is spiritually prepared. They claim that we need to overcome our divisions, our attachment to power and materialism, and our disrespect for the planet. So overcome our divisions, maybe Democrats versus Republicans. Maybe we could get over that whole thing. Sorry, please don't unsubscribe. <laughs> Some Pleiadian prophecies even predict a kind of cosmic event ooh, that will catalyze this transformation. They say that when humanity is ready, they will reveal themselves openly, marking the start of a new age. Many people dismiss the idea of Pleiadians as nothing more than just a fantasy. They argue that channeled messages are often the result of subconscious desires or imaginative thinking rather than actual contact. From a psychological perspective, there's a theory that beings like the Pleiadians represent humanity's idolized self-image. But there's something about the consistency of these stories across cultures and time periods that's hard to ignore. 
why would so many unrelated cultures fixate on the Pleiades as a place of divine or advanced beings? And how do we explain the messages of love, peace, and unity that echo across all of these channeled encounters from the Pleiades and beyond? To my fellow beings that miss a place that doesn't exist, I hope you found some comfort in knowing that maybe you do have a home amongst the stars. If you got this far into this episode, please give it a like on YouTube so that the algorithm gods will shine upon me and share it with a like-minded non-human if you can. Thank you so much for listening to Wicked Mysterious, and I will see you again soon.